Welcome to Ceramic Pottery and Sculpture. In this video, I demonstrate how to make a large ceramic slab planter from scratch. I begin by preparing the clay. I'm using recycled clay. To recycle clay, it's best to let it dry out entirely to bone dry. Then you break it up into pieces no larger than a golf ball. Those are put into water to be reconstituted. It's important you pour the dry clay into water and not pour water into the dry clay. After the clay has sat in the water for a couple of days, it's ready to be placed on a plaster slab. The plaster helps absorb moisture from the clay. For the clay to dry evenly, it's best to press it into cake. Once the clay's had a chance to dry for a couple days, it's put into a pug mill. At this point, the clay is soft plastic. The pug mill makes the clay all the same consistency and removes any air bubbles. The clay is cut into about 16 inch extrusions. It's then put into a plastic bag and allowed to sit for a few days. This helps to improve the clay's consistency. It takes four extrusions to make one side of the planter. The extrusions are first placed in the slab roller lengthwise. Then one is placed on top of another and they're re-rolled widthwise. The final two pieces are placed on top of each other and the excess clay is trimmed off of the edges. We now have a single large slab. This slab is rolled one more time with a spacer board to roll it out a little thinner.
Once all four slabs are rolled out, they're left out to dry overnight. But first, excess clay is cut off the slab Strips of plastic are cut and added to the edges all the way around each slab. This ensures that the slabs dry evenly. These slabs will be left out in the open overnight. The next day, the slabs are rolled out one more time to make them a little bit thinner. And now they're cut right to the edge of the template. To create a miter joint at the edges, a 45 degree angle is cut off of each side. These edges are then scored or scratched with a needle tool. Once all of the edges have been scored, water is added to soften the clay. The planter is assembled upside down. Each side is placed on end and allowed to lean against a stand. The clay is set into place, and then pressed into place, and finally smoothed out.
it's important that the edges are lined up right at corner to corner. Once all four sides are put together, the stand can be removed from the inside. The excess clay that was cut from the sides is now placed on the inside seams. This excess clay will add strength to the seams. The clay is first set into place, and then pressed into place, and then smoothed out, so you don't even notice any extra clay has been added. Applying pressure to these seams ensures that you have a strong join. The clay is measured up from the table all the way around so that it can be cut level before adding the bottom. A 45 degree angle is cut around the inside of the bottom. That same angle is cut around the bottom slab. The edges of the bottom slab are scored. The edges around the inside of the bottom of the planter are scored. Water is added again to soften the clay.
the bottom is placed on the planter. First it's set into place, and then it's pressed into place, and finally smoothed out. Applying pressure helps to ensure a strong join. Once the bottom has been attached, the piece can be flipped over. The extra clay that was cut off the bottom slab is now added to the inside seams. Again, this clay is set into place, then it's pressed into place, and finally smoothed out so you don't notice any additional clay has been added. A board is used to straighten up the walls. An equal distance is measured up from the table around the sides and any excess clay is cut off to ensure the top is level. The corners are squared up and strengthened with a paddle. Coils are used to finish the rim. These are made with an extruder.
Before adding the coils to the rim, the top and side edges are scored. And then water is added to soften the clay. A 45 degree angle is cut out of the coil. This allows it to set on the edge of the planter like a bull nose. The coils are first set into place and then pressed into place. A 45 degree angle is cut at the corners. Once all four coils are added, the rim can be smoothed out with a wooden rib on both the inside and the outside. A board is used to help ensure the rim is straight. The planter is allowed to dry slow for a week. It's then ready to be bisque fired. After the bisque firing, the piece is glazed. I glaze the inside first.
Before glazing the outside, I used masking tape to mask the rim. The glaze is poured around the outside of the planter. After finishing the rim with a brush, the piece is ready to be fired. This planter was fired in a gas kiln to cone 10 reduction. Thank you for watching the video. If you've enjoyed the background music, you can get your copy of Jim Valley's Rolling Sea CD online. Thank you for your support.